opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Hi everybody and welcome to The Huddle. It's episode six. I'm Scott Taylor. That's John Mackey. We've been reading the new magazine. It's great. First edition. New, first edition, the brand new Huddle magazine. Uh, it's spectacular. Um, you can pick it up all over town. We've had it at uh, high school games and bomber yep. games, and it's been everywhere. It was at championship weekend as well. Um, we have a great show today, tremendous show. Uh, Paulino Linick is here to talk about the fearless and talk about women's yep. football and actually what it's like to play women's football. Yeah. I'd like to play women's football. <laughs> Ryan Hosgood will be here, the quarterback of the Vincent Massey Trojans. Uh, terrific kid. Uh, the Absolutely. grandson of Ken Plain. Good quarterback. Yes, he is a good quarterback. And Kelsey McKay, his head coach, is here as well. Um, and also we got Todd Wilson from the Rifles. Uh, they have a, they will soon have a brand new head coach um, on the sidelines working with that team. We're going to talk to Todd about uh, the Rifles' new head coach. So there's there's lots going on. We've got a full house. John Mackey will be here. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk to Dave Donaldson. We'll do that right after this. You're watching The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. <laughs> You don't need a media monkey to make healthy choices. Think for yourself. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. Hi, I'm Brian Doby, head coach of the University of Manitoba Bisons. For all the news that you want and everything you need to know about football, watch The Huddle on Shaw TV. Welcome back to The Huddle. Scott Taylor along with Brian Doby, our favorite guest. Well, for all the other guests, second favorite, but... I like having Brian on because I can ask him one question. Seven minutes later, we're done. You bet. Makes it easy. It's, it's the world's easiest job. Um, I want to talk to you about your University of Manitoba Bisons. When we talked before the start of the season, um, I kind of thought this was a team that would, uh, would take on Calgary for the championship. You said, don't be crazy. We're still a young football club. Yeah. We've still got some uh, growing to do. Um, you've seen the growing pains. Your team's right in the playoff hunt. Um, disappointed, unhappy. Where do you stand on this club? You know, at the beginning of the year, I did temper that yes. with all of you guys. You did, with uh, me and, especially. And, uh, and again, uh, you know, being very honest about it, uh, that uh, you, we're still going through some growing pains. We've got a lot of talent, and it's a good team, but they, it, learning is a big part of it. And we're pretty much where I thought we would be, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you. That's a weird part about it. I th we're pretty much where I thought we would be uh, before the season started. Uh, but, but... Once we got into the season, uh, we've been rolling along, and we've lost two games in a cumulative total of 87 seconds con in consecutive weekends where we could be coasting in second place, challenging Calgary for first. We could have been further ahead than I actually thought we would be. But well, as a coach, you can't so, think of could have, would have, should have. No, no. So that part, though, is once you're immersed in it, then it's disappointing. Right. You know, when I look back to expectations, no, we're right where we should be in a, in a playoff struggle. But, but based on where we are now and what could have been, um, yeah, it, yeah, it is disappointing that we've let a couple of games get out of reach. And uh, now we have to recover and, and, and learn from that and move forward and, uh, and, and see what we're made of. Um, are, what things are you happiest about on this club? And what things have disappointed you? Well, you know, I, I really think that, uh, you know, the right things have happened in terms of, uh, you know, player development. I think we've seen a lot of progress with certain, certain players, veterans, taking steps forward the way they should be taking steps forward, um, going into their second year or their fourth year or whatever it may be. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with uh, the way the team has come together as a family um, and fights for each other. Uh, I think that the tough part is that, that we're, you know, we're, we're, we need to learn to be killer sharks. We need to learn to, to finish. Uh, we need to have, have that confidence. And you can't just say, be confident. Right. They have to experience uh, certain successes versus adversity to become that kind of a confident group. It, it doesn't come with somebody telling you how it should work. And that's what we're facing right now. Right. And, if, and, and if this team, if this group of guys... Can, can get beyond that and, and find themselves that way, uh, the ball's really in their court in that category. And once they do, this is going to be a, a real, real scary football team, whether it is the remainder of this year, 2013, 2014, as we progress. That's the missing ingredient right now is just that absolute confidence. And, uh, 
you know. I got that sense on yeah. last week's show when I talked to Nick Dembski. Okay. Kid with remarkable talent. Yes. Could be one of the great players in college football. Yeah. But he's 19. Yeah. He's not an old guy. He's yeah, not he's an not experienced even 19 guy. Yet. He's not even 19. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a lot of kids on this team. Yeah. They haven't been in this situation as talented as they are. Yeah. There's a lot of veteran players on other other teams that um, uh, can do it to you at the end of games. Absolutely. And, and opposing quarterbacks have done that. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, you look at that, and, and the CIS is a gigantic jump. It's a bigger jump than people understand it to be. Uh, you know, you take high school ball. Oh, and, I think high school to know, CIS is a bigger jump than CIS to the CFL. That's just where I was going. There's no question. The next natural step is to pro football from here. Take, coming from high school, Nick Dembski, great program at Oak Park High School, and, and then coming into the CIS, regardless of the program, is a gigantic mm -hmm. jump regardless. So, and he's made it know, pretty well. He's made it well, and, and so have Anthony many, Coons many others. Is, yes, oh, exactly. we can go through a whole list yeah. of guys that have stepped forward. But, but, there, but there is a learning curve, and there is an experience curve that they need to go through. Um, anytime in anything in life where you go from one one level to another and and that's where we're at right now we're, we are where we should be we should be a team that's finding itself now that's and fighting that's, for a that's carving its signature and fighting for a playoff spot and that's exactly where we stand right now we are carving a, a signature we're beginning to to initial that out and uh, I'm looking forward to not just the end of the season to see what we've got left in, in, in our tank but I'm looking forward to taking this group uh, into 13, into 14, even into 15. Uh, that's how young we are in many areas. That's exciting uh, uh, for our coaching staff to, to, to have that opportunity and, uh, you know, good things uh, and of in course, the horizon. If, and, and like anything else, if you get to the playoffs, anything can happen, right? Absolutely. We'd love another uh, a playoff shot at Calgary. Of course we would. Uh, they may be the best team in the nation. Hey, you know, we're that young, rising team. Let's go get them. I, I'd love to, uh, for our guys to, to have that opportunity. We're going to talk again before the season ends. You bet. Brian Doby, head coach, University of Manitoba Bisons. This is The Huddle. We'll be back uh, right after this. I touched the ball before it went out, coach. Alex, good call. Sportsmanship, pass it on. I'm very fortunate on this show every week to get to talk to female football players. It's a lot more fun than talking to sweaty old men. And they probably think that of me. But uh, with us this week is Paulina Linick from Manitoba Fearless. And you don't look in any way like a football player. No. Uh. So I guess the question has to be, um, when you play women's football, mm -hmm. um, it's just like men's football. Absolutely. There is no particular size that matters. It's just if you want to play. And um, tell me, do you have fun playing? Oh, my God. I have extreme amounts of fun playing. It's like no other experience. Tell us about, about playing football and how you started to play football and how you got to Fearless. Um, actually, it was just on a whim because uh, I'm a massage therapist mm -hmm. and uh, a fellow massage therapist told me about the program and it was actually her boyfriend that was, uh, he was a coach for, I believe he was the O-line coach mm -hmm. for the first year. And so she told me to come try it out because uh, I was playing slow pitch and spongy and different sports. So came and checked it out. and. Every time I have a conversation, when I talk to, to your friend and my friend, Tannis, uh, we talked about the fact that um, anybody can play, and, and anybody who's even interested in sports can play. And one of the things that has made Saskatoon so good is that they brought in athletes from other sports, a lot of basketball players. Absolutely. If you're an athlete and you like to play, football can be really a lot of fun. Oh, we have all walks of life. Uh, we have uh, basketball players, uh, volleyball players, you name it, people that even haven't played organized sports before. Now most of the people that I've talked to that play women's football um, have, have been referred to it, like their friends play and come on and try out and, and, and give it a shot. Um, but if you're just out there and, and you think that this looks interesting, um, you can go to Manitoba Fearless and, uh, and, and, and just try out for the club. Yeah, uh, get to our website mm -hmm. and uh, I'll all the contact information is there, and if you have any questions, just send us an email and go from there. But Now, yeah. this isn't, we, I want to make this very, very clear to people, because a lot of women have seen the lingerie league. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and it's, it's <laughs> this isn't lingerie football. This no. is real football. Yeah. And, and this is, these are real athletes playing a real game, and you don't just play in Winnipeg. This isn't fooling around between St. Vital and, and North Winnipeg. No, this, absolutely You guys not. go on the we road. Travel. You play in, in Regina and Saskatoon and mm -hmm. maybe next year Brandon. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it, this is a big-time league. Oh, it's wonderful. 
there's so much up and there's so many so many opportunities for women that again haven't played sports before um, yeah so okay obviously it's, it's tons of obviously fun. though football is a very violent game yeah. um, it, it, but a female athlete or a woman who wants to get involved shouldn't be f afraid of it because Absolutely you're not Absolutely not. You know what, I've, I've played soccer for a quick year, uh, spongy, and I find football is less, uh, if you could believe it, uh, less aggressive than really? some no, of I've watched, stuff. I've watched your games. And I'm telling you, like, tempers, tempers arise on the ice and on the soccer field more than I see on football. So go figure. <laughs> so you recommend this to anybody? Absolutely. I think football is great and it's very sportsmanlike. You know, as far as our group of girls are amazing, and we have seven coaches that have so many years of experience with football. So even if you don't know, you know everything mm -hmm. about football, come try it out. We have coaches that are very well experienced and will teach everyone and. Whether you've been an athlete or not, Absolutely. there is a place for you. Absolutely. On the Fearless. Pauline, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Pauline Olenek, Manitoba Fearless. When we come back, we're going to talk about the other guys' football. It's not as much fun. <laughs> this is The Huddle. It's on Shaw TV. <laughs> Hi, I'm Buck Pierce, and I love Winnipeg. That's why I support United Way. Together, we can make our city safer and stronger. Every dollar of your donation goes straight into the community and none to fundraising and administration. Please join me. Get in the game and give today. It's the huddle. I'm Scott Taylor, and I'm with Ryan Hosgood. Now, I got to tell you, I've known your mom forever. <laughs> uh, Ryan's mom is Carol Plain, yep. who is Ken Plain's daughter, who was one of the greatest basketball players I ever saw play in this province. Um, Carol Plain, a tremendous athlete herself, and your dad was a hockey player with the Blues. And Ryan is the quarterback uh, of the Vincent Massey Trojans. And and tell us about your year. I know it's been a pretty good one, and uh, I know you've got to be pleased with some of the things that have happened and not pleased with the others. Tell us a bit about how it's gone. Yeah, we're four and two right now. And I mean, our first game, we walked into uh, Oak Park at their home field, and you know we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. We've been working hard in the off season, and we went in there, and yeah, we lost three to two. <laughs> Which I mean, <laughs> three to two. How was thinking, the goaltending? Ah, the goaltending was not bad. You know, goalies <laughs> both ways were playing well, and <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we fumbled on a one-yard line, and we took a pick back for a touchdown, but we had illegal blocking like 40 yards behind the play, and it was just you know different different errors and mistakes that we made. That just it set us back, but I mean, we moved forward from that. We had a very, very good uh, game the next week against Sturgeon, and then we went into Oak Park, uh, or not Oak Park, sorry, St. Paul's week four, and yeah, they came to our home field and we lost to them by by a touchdown, and we in that game as well, we had an opportunity to win that game. Came down in the final minutes, we threw a pass uh, downfield, and our wide receiver caught on the one yard line, and he went offside. He just leaned forward a little bit. He took his eye off the ball and so the ball came back and after that we uh, we couldn't put the drive together uh, to finish it off and go to the end zone. So unfortunately we lost that game as well. But I mean 4-2, and two, I mean we're happy with that. Definitely. You, had, you had a big game against Murdoch. You played really well that yeah, game. Yeah, we had a, we just went out there uh, on Friday and I mean it was windy and it was we were kind of with the wide receivers like alright how are we going to how are we going to do this game? Are you guys going to be able to you know hear the calls and how is the passing game going to go? But I mean the pa it was probably the best we could have played in that in the circumstances and yeah we went in there and won 35 to 1 which I don't think we were expecting at all and yeah we just put on a very very good show both offensively defensively and special teams so we, it's pretty social yeah yeah it is and you know we're all we're always together at school we got tons of classes together and it's just it's just a great time going to football practice and tell us a little bit about yourself how'd you get started in football and I know that football isn't the only game you love yeah well I've been playing uh, I'm playing for I think six years now and I always play flag football when I was really young I want to play tackle but I was really you know into hockey at the time and yeah. it was just it was just something with my grandpa that I was really, really involved in and uh so, and then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to play tackle this year. And I got sent out actually to LaSalle. Is that they, right? Yeah, they had two teams uh, the first year. And I was playing running back, and I just, I enjoyed it so much. And it was, yeah, it was one of the greatest experiences. And I'm glad I stuck with it. And now, your dad was a hockey player, but your grandpa was a football player. He's yeah. on a stamp for crying out loud. They write books about him. The, yeah, guy's, yeah. the guy's pretty cool. Um, uh, how was it in the family? Would they rather have you been a hockey player or a, a football player? Um, you know, I think it's... <laughs> whatever I want. They're happy with what I'm doing and they're, you know, very supportive and it's, yeah, they come out to every game. So, I mean, really what I choose is they're happy with it. And what do you want to do with football? I know you've been to some camps. You want to be seen. You want to play. Um, tell us what your goals are. Well, it's definitely university right now. I mean, I would love to play university ball wherever someone is interested. And 
you know, we're just going to take it one step at a time. I mean, if I get the opportunity to play university ball, then, of course, my next goal would be CFL, whether that's an option or not. And I'm just going to, you know, keep progressing from there and working hard in the offseason. You, uh, you started as a running back. Have you played anything other than quarterback? Uh, I, they stuck me at defense uh, linebacker my first game, and I had no idea how to tackle yet or anything. And I came right through the line. I remember going in, and I tried to wrap up the quarterback around his neck, and he just went through and took it for, I think, a 40-yard gain or something. And I was just like, I can't handle this. i got to play offense. And yeah, I just talked to the coach after that, and I, he put me on it, and I've been there ever since. One thing we like to do here on the huddle with um, all of our high school stars is to ask 10 questions, <laughs> and we will begin. Your favorite sports team? Favorite sports team, Carolina Panthers for that no NFL. No kidding. Yeah, big old Cam. And then for NHL, of course, the Winnipeg Jets now that we got them back. Now that you got them back. Your favorite athlete? Favorite athlete would probably Cam Newton. I mean, just overall, he's... Outstanding. When you he's, play, do you try to play like Cam Newton? Uh, no, but, you know. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Yeah, he's he's one heck of an athlete for I sure. I think I know the answer to this. Your favorite thing to do away from football? Away from football would probably be hang out with friends, definitely. Very, I got a great nice. great group of friends. If if there was no such thing as football, what would you play? Hockey. I would focus, yeah, definitely. Were you good hockey. at it? You know, I was more the grinder. I wasn't the pretty deke around guys, you know, put it top shelf. I was the the hard work in the corners kind of guy. So definitely I would probably focus on focus on that. So you're the Spencer Mahachek as opposed <laughs> to the Blake Wheel. Yeah, my guys called me the shovel. <laughs> Your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show probably Modern Family. It is just, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Right. It is a funny show. Favorite movie? Favorite movie. That's a tough one. I probably... Actually, I'd probably say Taken. I saw Taken 2 recently. Did you like I, it? Oh, I loved it. I haven't it. been yet. Yeah, it was very, very good. The first one was great. It's great to see Liam Neeson blow people yeah. up. It's just, it's just fun to go and watch. Your favorite actor? My favorite actor, man. Um, the big the big difference between Modern Will Family Ferrell. and... Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Really? Yeah, uh, all his movies are so just it's the tops guys. for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? I enjoy, and you know, we eat a lot of uh, pork tenderloin at my house, and yeah, we, they cook it just perfectly, and it's 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 delicious. Uh, favorite music? Favorite music would probably be techno right now. Um, really? really? Yeah. Really Skrillex getting into it. stuff and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I just went to Data Life on Monday. Yeah. And, yeah, it was. Techno. One of the, <laughs> you don't strike me as a techno guy. <laughs> hey, you know, you never know. And the one question we always have to ask: Betty or Veronica? <laughs> a little bit of both, definitely. Well, you know. good answer. <laughs> you yeah, you're no wonder you're the cornerback. Got to have the smarts and you know the good looks as well, but definitely you know a sporty girl works out well too. Got to like it, Ryan. Thanks so much for having hey, me. Thanks for having me. Ryan Hosgood, the quarterback of the Vincent Massey Trojans. Playoff time coming up. Uh, high school football has never been better than it is now. When we come back, we're going to talk to his coach, Kelsey McKay, the Vincent Massey Trojans. We'll do that right after this on the huddle, right here on Shaw. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. I'm a runner and I love to run. Amanda's my friend. Arthritis means she can't always run, so I'm doing it for her. To fund the quest, to find the cure. You can take part. You can run, you can walk, you can trek in some pretty amazing places. The Arthritis Society makes it simple. Amanda makes it important. Check our website. How far would I go? I'd go anywhere to fight arthritis. It's the huddle. I'm Scott Taylor, and I'm with Kelsey McKay, the head coach of the Vincent Massey Trojans. And coach, what I love most about your team is not that you're terribly successful this year, which you are, and, and you've got to be pretty happy with them. But you take these guys to some pretty exotic places, <laughs> and I know you went to Los Angeles and played our old friend Jeff Steinberg's team yeah. down in L.A. Tell us about that experience. Well, it was, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, a lot different culture down there, um, and uh, it was it was phenomenal. Like it was it was hot, way hot. Like it was 110 the whole time. Uh, we had the practice at 8:30 in the morning um, at their stadium, and it was already like 90 at that time. And, it, and it that was, was their it was stadium. Well, you know, for the game, it was, you know, the field turf and, and all that kind of stuff. It was, we have a couple great shots where we're coaching in the game, the sun sets right behind us and it's palm trees around and there's the, the 50 cheerleaders and the drum line and their team. It was, it was literally Friday Night Lights. It was what you see on TV. It was a phenomenal experience. Actually, at halftime, I started to speak to the guys and I could hear a commotion. They're all looking past me. I looked back, I said, okay, you know what? 
let's, uh, you guys got about two minutes you can watch. And what it was is the cheerleaders on the field and stuff. And it was just a neat experience. And I wanted to see it too. It was something. Yeah, because if phenomenal. you're going to go there, you may as well live the experience, yeah, right? Absolutely. And it was cool. A lot of our kids billeted with their families. And uh, so they got treated like royalty down there and, and so forth. So yeah, it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, they kicked, they kicked uh, us pretty good. But they were. But uh, you went on the road this year and you didn't get kicked. Yeah, we you went. You played Regina. Yeah, we went down and played Balfour, uh, the Redmen. And uh, in Mosaic, uh, just before Labor Day, and, and I think we won 38-13, and it was a great exhibition game and, and a great bonding experience for our players. And I, I've never been in Mosaic before, and it was it really neat, like just how tight it is and how close the fans are to the field and uh, that new jumbotron. And yeah, as we were leaving the field, it sort of said next home game, Labor Day, you know, versus the Bombers and stuff. And we had high hopes at that time, and unfortunately, it didn't work out. But yeah, well, it was a great so. experience for our guys. But things have worked out for you. You've had a good season with these guys. Tell us a little bit about your team. Um, if we go watch the playoffs, who do we watch? Well, uh, at linebacker on defense, Ryan Elick, phenomenal. Been three years starter at varsity level, and uh, he's got such great instincts to where the ball is, and he knows how to shed blocks and get to the. He's probably had the most uh, behind the, um, behind the, like tackles for a loss than we've had ever in our program. Really? Yeah. So on defense, yeah, Beck Fullerton, the playmaker. That's what I call him. You know, he blocks punts. Interceptions, makes big hits. He is extremely talented. Great instincts, instincts for the ball, wherever it is, and he plays it so well in in the air. On offense, uh, our center uh, Ryan Wigelinski, probably the most respected player on our team. He's he's six four, three hundred and ten pounds, and uh, he controls the middle. We took him from tackle, moved him to center, and then we had our most consistent game on offense last uh, week. And then our quarterback Ryan Hall's good three years starting for us. Uh, just a phenomenal leader, as high a character as there is for for a kid his age and um, you know he's he's been a pleasure to, uh, so to teach and coach extremely proud you know we're only four years old as a program right. and uh, we're pretty pretty excited where we stand you know we're up there at the top with the the Sislers and the Oak Parks and the St. Paul's and uh, we're excited how far we've come we've worked really hard with these guys uh, Fort Gary as a community I think really really we're starving for some high school mm -hmm. football I mean I came over from Churchill four years ago where there's a great tradition there and yep. it's very proud of my time there as, as a student player and a coach and um, you know principal Martin brought me over four years ago, and and it's, you know, it's it's, it's been we've started a great tradition there, I think, and um, we're really proud of these guys and. You know, playoffs, right? You get there, everybody's 0-0 zero, zero once you start the playoffs right. in a week, and it's first team to three. And we're really excited about these guys. You know, what a great opportunity. And you don't get many opportunities in life. I always tell them about Dan Marino, right? Makes Super Bowl. In his first uh, year. Yeah, exactly. And he, I saw an interview where he talked about how he was going to be the, he thought, oh, this is easy. I'm going to be there many more times. I'm going to win a couple of them. Never did. Never got that. So when you have an opportunity to take advantage of it, and that's, we have the makeup for it to, to get there. And as long as we keep doing the right things every day, in school and in practice. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Kelsey McKay, the head coach of the Vincent Massey Trojans High School Football Playoffs, coming right up as we speak. When you can't do it all, do what you can. Caring for others. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. I'm Scott Taylor, this is The Huddle, and uh, I'm joined by some of the smartest people in the whole wide world. And today I have another smart one with us for this segment. Todd Wilson, the president of the Winnipeg Rifles. You're in the process, or you're almost there at hiring a brand new coach. What's the direction you want to take this coach, this coach and this football team in? Yeah, I think, I think you know, we finished 11 seasons and we've got through that first decade. Our focus is going to switch a little bit more from surviving and growing and get into winning. And it has to be the focus at every level of competitive sports. It has to be the focus and it's time for us to make that step. Uh, and we think this is the perfect opportunity when we're naming a new head coach. Yeah, you've, been, you've had three coaches um, and you're right for, for a period of time it's just making sure that the operation runs and make sure that you can get on the bus and you can compete with the other teams but you've had good you've had a good season you had a seven and one year under Mike Watson that was a tremendous year huh. um, I, 
do you get back to that? Is it is it kind of a back to the future thing, or do you want to do things differently with the rifles than you've done in the past? We're hoping to do a few things different. Certainly, if we could reproduce what Mike did, uh, Mike was a great head coach and, and motivated a lot of players. I, I think that we have to accomplish in two different areas. One of the focuses has to be on recruiting, and recruiting for us is both high school players coming out and it's retaining a guy. So right. trying to keep yeah. that extra. The difference between the Saskatoon Hilltops and the and the Winnipeg Rifles of the world is that third and fourth year junior player, sometimes fifth year junior player, having that experience makes the difference. And it's important to find a balance of when is it best to play that one more year of junior, when is it best to jump. If you can start in the CIS, you should jump. You only get X number of games to play for most guys after high school. In their life, yes. Get yeah. the most out of each one of them. And I think we have to deliver that message. And uh, we think a head coach can be the vehicle to help deliver that message, both the high school kids and our own players trying to keep them for one we more We had year. that conversation and it really struck home with me, is that when you finish high school, you look at your future and for most kids, the vast majority of kids, they maybe have 30, 35, 40 games left tops in their entire football career. I, that really changes your approach to how you're going to play, I think, if you know that. Yeah. The worst part is for guys my age, that's real and you believe that. When you're a high school kid, you're invincible and football goes on for as long as you can foresee. So it's important that we deliver that message without destroying some of that confidence and vigor that they have and just believing that they can play forever. But the reality is, is that if, if you're going to be a football player, your hope is to one day in Canada make it to the Canadian Football League. But even, even if you decide to be a university player, you've only got that in front of you. And it's, and, and it's the question of starting and yeah. playing that makes the biggest difference. Because right. you, would you not be better off being a star with the rifles as Ryan Marsh was, um, and then moving up to the, to the Bisons where he played against uh, Saskatoon and played quite well. Yeah. So he's, he was able to make that step. Yeah. Is that what you're gonna try to sell kids? Absolutely, and in, in 10 years, we've produced three nationally recognized quarterbacks. Right. Those guys have gone on and had successful careers at the CIS level. It's more than just the Andrew Harris's and the, the Fords of the world that right. go right from junior to CFL, and with the territorial protection the CFL has, that's an advantage. But it's more importantly, the guys that have played some juniors, if you look at the CIS guys that get drafted and have a shot, a high percentage of those guys play junior first. Right. And it's all about preparing yourself for the next level. The more prepared you are, the more successful you'll be at that level. And we have to get that message out. And the other one is too, and I, and, and I really appreciate this one, is if you're, if, if you're thinking about moving on, make sure that if you're moving on, you're gonna get to play that you're going to get to start because again it's that counting the games you're better off to be a regular a first stringer with the rifles than to be watching in the white jersey yeah. when when they're wearing the brown jerseys on the sideline right. of the bison absolutely there's no replacement for on field action full speed full speed game action it, nothing prepares you better than that and nothing adds to that memory bank and keeps it full of that camaraderie you had with those players when you were contributing and part of that team. One day you get old like me and you look back and those are the memories you cherish. Well, when you get the coach hired, we want to see you back and the coach back um, to talk about how the future is going to look for the Rifles in Manitoba. Absolutely. would love the opportunity. Great stuff. Todd Wilson, the president of the Winnipeg Rifles, a team that is kind of in flux right now, but they should have their brand new quarterback uh, under contract uh, very, very soon. It'll be interesting to see where the Rifles go. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up. This is the huddle on Shaw TV. Thank you, dear. You make me feel so young. Think young. Pass it on. You make me feel so spring. Life is all about chances. Made, given, and taken. Chances missed. And chances that change everything. Chances to try, to fail, and then try again. Chances to grow. Chances to change. Chances to learn, teach, lead. Chances. It's all about what you do with them. Boys and Girls Clubs of Winnipeg. Donate. Check us out. Make the call. How you doing? I'm Kelly Butler, Assistant Officer Line Coach for University of Manitoba Bisons. For all your football information, watch the Hold on Shaw TV. I am worn out. Yeah. That was a busy show. Sure was. Yeah, it really was. Uh, thanks so much to uh, Dave Donaldson, Paulino Linick. Ryan Hosgood, the quarterback of the Vincent Massey Trojans, and his coach, Kelsey McKay, and of course, uh, Todd Wilson, the president of the Winnipeg Rifles. We've been spending a lot of time reading this. It's tremendous. Yep. Um, I love this picture 
uh, taken by Matt Hamilton of uh, Andrew and, Harris. Yeah, Andrew Harris of the BC Lions, uh, Grant Park Pirate, uh, Oak, Oak Park, Park Raider. Yeah. Um, and uh, and thanks to you for the work you did on the huddle. Yeah. It's a tremendous magazine, really well done. Football Manitoba does everything so well, don't they? <laughs> we sure do. This is the huddle. It's been episode six. We had a great day. I'm Scott Taylor. That's John Mackey. This is community created on Shaw TV, and uh, we'll be back and see you next week. Opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of this station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view.